following Four Aces production is for mature audiences only. Listener discretion is highly advised. Hey, 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 what's up? It's another new day, and it's me here, K Double Double K, right here on the Cheap Pop Podcast. And I am here, as always, with my brother from the other side of the mother, Mm -hmm. the one and only Alpha. How you doing, brother? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Back again. Once again, as my boy here says, Alpha Does America has officially have fucking concluded, and I'm back (laughs) home in the West Coast. And of course... (laughs) I leave for seven days and on the, there we go. Yay. (laughs) And on the third day of that trip, I wake up to find out that CM Punk signing with AEW is no longer a fucking rumor. So imagine my surprise being three fucking days out. And that's what we're digging in right the fuck away this time. Man, I don't know what to say. I'll say this. It's weird how the dynamics of this play out. Yeah. Because is it a coup for AEW to have signed CM Punk? Yes. But did AEW technically wrestle Punk away from WWE? No. No. Because Punk was never really going to go back to in-ring competition for WWE in the first place. But it is great. Punk's been been five months removed from from, from the backstage show. Yeah. So I look at it like this. I am happy for AEW. Mm -hmm. This doesn't mean any kind of grand, oh my God, WWE is over. I broke it down for this kid online the other day because he he tried Mm -hmm. to say, oh, with with these two signings, WWE, potentially them signing Bray Wyatt, and we'll get to that too. Um, But potentially them signing Bray Wyatt, this means that it's over for WWE. Look, just, just stop. Here's the deal. In order for it to be over for WWE, you would have to do something so huge that it would pull over half of WWE's audience from choosing to watch Raw or SmackDown on Monday or Friday night to watching AEW on Wednesday night. This is something that I don't see happening because most of the people that are already watching AEW are the people who don't like WWE in the first place. So those are not eyes being taken away from WWE because most of these people had stopped watching WWE five years ago, at least according to them. Right. Okay. That's only that's that's one I haven't heard before, you know? Yeah. And it's it's not that CM CM Punk is such a niche, powerful talent that at this point, the only people who would be massively moved by that would be the people already dedicating themselves to AEW. Right. That's a point. That's a point. And here's the thing. Now, the little bit of people that's left outside of that 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 the bulk of AEW's audience are people that are going to watch what, what I call and or people. Mm. They're wrestling fans. They don't give a if it's WWE. They don't give if it's New Japan. They don't give a fuck if it's NXT. They don't give a fuck if it's AEW. They're going to watch. It. So those people, you're not taking eyes away from WWE. Those people yeah. are going to watch both. You know, it's not like these shows are going head to head. So, so a person can like WWE and watch Raw and still watch AEW on Wednesday night. Mm-hmm. And, and so a lot, of this, a lot of the AEW fan base gets themselves yeah. all worked up thinking that this is somehow going to pull viewers away. What would pull viewers away and the reason why it worked this way in the WCW time, what would pull viewers away is if Roman Reigns, Randy Orton, John Cena chose to drop their WWE contract and show up on AEW. Something we know is like it, it's Fucking infinitesimally impossible. small the, the, the chance of it happening, yeah. no matter how much money the cons can offer them. But if one of those people that would sh- be the thing that draws their attention. Yeah. Why? You know, uh, because that's who they're already invested in, right? Right. So 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 that would be something that would shift it. But somebody like Punk, and I hate to say it. I love Brian Danielson. And I think for as far as giving him new people to wrestle with, I think AEW is amazing for him. 
but I don't think there's enough of his fan base de- embedded within the WWE universe to truly draw eyes away from WWE and on to a- a- AEW. So, so Absolutely. it's just it's just the way I've been thinking it's, about it recently. That's definitely one way of putting it. Absolutely, so, that's one way to put, say, to put it into perspective. That's and that's not, not, not saying that they don't move the needle. Yeah, that's yeah. not that's not shooting it down. That's not saying they don't move the needle. They do, but I don't think it'll be in the way that a lot of AEW fans are hoping for. I, I, I agree. I hate the idea that I, I I wish it were that way. I wish it were this way, but it sucks that it does not work in the way that viewers equals payout. Right. They, they are no longer something that goes hand in hand anymore, especially when talking about WWE. Maybe with AEW and other promotions, absolutely. But with WWE, it doesn't quite work that way. Right. That being said, CM Punk and Daniel Daniel Bryan as a group, as as two people, definitely move the fucking needle. Yeah, no doubt about that. But here is my small problem with this, and AEW completely fixed this problem in the past eight days. <laughs> <laughs> following that, due to some 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 recent debuts, which we'll get to later on, but as of right now, in the moment at least, and in retrospect of the time that when I heard the news, it was still one of those cases where like, okay, yeah, love love Danielson, love Punk. But between them both, between them both, I'm talking that's maybe 11 years at best. That's that's the mileage you get out of those guys' career anymore at this point. Yeah. Not because, not, not well, not just because of their age, but because they've both expressed the fact that they're coming down to an end with this even being a passion for them, with this being something that even drives them to do that anymore. Yeah. And I'm not saying that I could be speaking for them, but realistically, look me in the eyes and say, yeah, in 2027, we're, we're still going to have CM Punk and Daniel Bryan both still wrestling in the ring. You can't look me in the eyes and say that because it's not feasible at the, thing, at the way things are at right now. And so, you know, it is one of those cases where I was just sitting like, all right, we got to sign more people that are going to stop carrying AEW for the next six years. And we need people that are going to be carrying it for the next 15 <laughs> But like, still in retrospect, this moves the fucking needle. If there was ever a time to start watching AEW, it's now. Yeah. Even just I, to see where any of this goes. Now, I think the AEW will see a boost in viewership because there are some casual fans. I, I think just where I think where a lot of the AEW hardcores go wrong is thinking that it's somehow going to take away from the people that normally watch WWE. Um, but at the end of the day, do they move the needle? Oh fuck yeah, they do. Um, yes. just like just like the potential signing of, of Bray Wyatt even though I don't know if he's going to end up landing there because word has it he had just he had just um, been cleared by medical doctors to get back in the ring again when WWE released him so Sorry. you know he may be a Zelina Vega type situation where it looks like he's bouncing yeah. and he may end up in AEW but most likely he'll end up re-signing and showing back up in uh, in WWE possibly even as the Fiend we'll see though We'll see. Yeah. I wouldn't mind seeing Bray Wyndham, Wyndham Rotunda show up in AEW um, because there's some matchups there. Uh, Absolutely. He, Absolutely. And watching and watching Fighter Fest earlier today, and I and I'll break this to uh, bring this up for a quick couple minute segment, um, small segment. Uh, well, I'll say it reminds me less of the Attitude Era, which is the most common like comparison mm-hmm. I hear. Um, and it reminds me more of uh, Impact when it first hit uh, Spike TV. Yeah. Uh, like, you know, it, uh, presentation-wise, the type of guys that they have there, um, the type of crowds that they have, it reminds me of Impact very, very early on, back when Joe and AJ and, and Frankie yeah, Kazarian like, and Christopher like Daniels o- were o- the o- top o- guys. Like 0-4, 0-5, 0-4, 0-5, TNA, Yeah. Uh, like like that it reminds me of that and i don't say that as an insult like oh no they're yeah, gonna, not 15 years from now they're going to be exactly where tna is no it's not no, that it's just, just the, the feel vibe of it. it's just the vibe yeah, the vibe that they they put off because i i don't we're not going to get the attitude error again folks just let it go it doesn't matter what AEW does there is no attitude error. that's time it's come and gone and it's in the past but yeah. what you but what you can get is another wrestling company that draws excitement out of a different portion of the wrestling community than the WWE portion of it. Absolutely. And I think that's Absolutely. what we finally have. We have a company that is making the right moves now. And just I hate making to say, an alternative. Yeah. They got to stop. They, 
as much as people don't want to believe it, I've mentioned this multiple times on the show before. Daddy's money runs out at some point. Okay. Daddy's money is not a is not an empty pit. Everybody's like, oh, yep. but the cons are yep. worth seven billion. Yeah, and about six point so five was, billion. So was that. Ted Turner. Yeah. So was Ted Turner. <laughs> well, a lot of them forget that six point five billion of that is tied up in the football team and the and the soccer team. Like, exactly. like it's not liquid money. They're not worth seven billion liquid. They're worth seven billion with all their assets. Yeah. Right. So, so, and trust me, even if they were worth seven billion cash, Daddy Khan is not going to let his son spend seven billion on a wrestling com- company just to yeah. keep it alive for a few years. No, the money train stops at some point. So, at what point does he, unless these WWE guys are coming to him? or not XW, but these wrestlers, these top tier wrestlers are coming to him at discount prices because they just want to stick it to WWE or they just really want to wrestle. Yeah. You know, um, at what point does the gravy chain stop with bringing in these, these guys like Bray Wyatt, like CM Punk, like Brian Danielson. You're right. Yeah. Like, you know, at what point does the money train stop with that? Cause, cause right. we all know it's been publicly put out there. I love AEW to death, but at this point in time, due to their ventures of trying to dig into the video game market, they are not running in the black. They, they are not, they are not making a profit right now. So, so mm-hmm. can they, you know, at what point does daddy go, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold up. I didn't, I'm not giving you my money to throw into, I'm not yeah. giving you this money to throw into a money pit. So, but, right. um, but yeah, like, it's just an interesting, because like you said, with the, with the recent releasing of a lot of decent or, or above average WWE stars, bro, Braun Strowman, Bray Wyatt, um, you already had you already had Brian Danielson snapped up by AEW. Uh, you yeah. got Bronson Reed was just recently released, unfortunately. Yep. That hurt yeah. my feelings. Um, yeah, man. You know, like Malachi to so bring in Malachi Black or Alistair Black, mm-hmm. like guys, Andrade. Like at a certain point, that money starts adding up. Yep. And and I believe that they they they, they they'll do okay. But keep that in mind. The reason why Vince yeah, is still man. around 50 years down the road isn't just because he had the best wrestling or the only wrestling product in town. It's because that man knew how to run a business. Yeah. He knew how to turn a profit. That's why he's right. still here. You're right. They're only just now cutting down on the whole talent stashing thing and AEW is picking up a lot of people. And I don't think AEW now has the time to, especially with Rampage and Dark. But we'll have to see if it, works as a genuine plus to them at this point if anyone at this point makes up on that considering how much money they're dumping into this many fucking superstars for sure but aw as a whole the product love it fucking wonderful love it while we're here like as of right now the the best thing in wrestling that's been done in a while in my honest opinion has been the labors of jericho like of course there's been some things that are wrong with it but in terms of just pure entertainment value and shock value it's been fucking great. It's a perfect mix of storytelling and physicality. Jericho being an innovator and piggybacking off of every different age of his career all at once. I hope this isn't a retirement run, but if it is, then it's a fucking great one. Well, can I can I say something? Go ahead. Go ahead. Absolutely. This isn't saying anything negative. I do yeah. agree with every point that you just made, but I do have to say something a little bit to the opposite of what you just said. Go ahead, go ahead, please. It reminds me of the Cody MJF for you. When MJF was like, you've got to do this, and then you've got to do this, and then you've got to do this in order to get a match with me. That's fair. You know what I'm saying? It, 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 it's not, I know it's not a rehashing of that storyline. That's true, line, yeah. But from that perspective, it kind of feels like a rehashing of that storyline. Um, but I do enjoy it with the week to week and wondering what's next. You know, like I said, so far up to up to the recording of this episode, we've had Sean Spears. That was yeah. an amazing match, even though I I love Tony Schiavone, but bro, you've got to stop with the Hyper Bowl. Talking about the match where Sean Spears can use a chair and 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 Chris Jericho. Yeah. I've never seen anything like this in wrestling. Shut the fuck up, Tony Schiavone. Shut up. Like, yeah. like this match has been done like 15 times over fucking a million Let, times before, man, before like, the uh, fucking so, uh, 80s and around. Like, stop. And you, and you, exactly. I was like, you've been around long enough that, that you've seen this a few times. Stop it. Yeah. Um, but uh, it was, it made for a great match. 
you know, and it's really Absolutely. pushing Jericho over that baby face line that we all know he doesn't need much of a pushing to get past, you know, right. um, but, uh, and then bringing back the painkiller for the match with Nick Gage. Was, was fucking awesome. Yeah. Like, was obviously, fucking like, awesome. as you would imagine me being a death match mark and a new Japan mark was fucking explosive for my ass but uh, <laughs> of course we had the amazing the one of the best things that's ever happened in all of wrestling now at this point the now famous i don't care what anybody says you cannot reprimand him for this because it is not his fault him using his nick gage using his trademark pizza cutter to bust open <laughs> jericho hard style and then immediately followed up by a domino's pizza ad immediately beginning with a pizza cutter it's poetic it's fucking art imitates life baby it's mm. oh man very much a, a great spot it caused a little controversy got AEW a little buzz i, I did enjoy that yeah um oh and, and zach Ryder, it? who um zach oh, Ryder, who most recently just beat nick gage for the gcw world championship and started woo! a fucking mob doing it <laughs> went and immediately posted a picture of him with his GCW championship eating some Domino's pizza saying since I'm the new deathmatch king now I, I'll be your new spokesman and said just to piggyback because <sighs> just just a really quick break into this his whole new thing is that Matt Cordona has gone to GCW and has essentially become the biggest fucking troll on the face of this planet <laughs> and is dubbing himself the king of deathmatch wrestling against Nick Gage, who is the most loved man in GCW fucking history. Oh, man. You know, it's nice to see these guys leave WWE. It's like, I think here's the here's the biggest thing that, that's flawed. And I think a lot of people think that hardcore WWE fans w hope for these people to go somewhere and fail uh, when they get released from WWE. And the fact of the mm -hmm. matter is, no, is that over their time in WWE, we grew to love these guys. We grew, yeah. And we wished, we truly do hope that they go on to do bigger and better things. And there's some Absolutely. of them that I hope take the McIntyre and, and Jinder Mahal route and go and prove themselves. Get make themselves fucking jacked and then elsewhere. come back. And then come back. Exactly. Go get Jack somewhere and come back and, 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 and hold the WWE title, you know, uh, because yeah. it doesn't matter what happens with AEW, WWE, because it's been around for so long and there's such a lineage will always be the historic title that, that you want to win. Like, of course, yeah. yeah, you could go back to the territory days. You can go back beyond WWE and talk the NWA uh, yeah. heavyweight championship. And that one really has a lineage that goes back a little, a lot Even further, further than, yeah. the w, than the WWE. But uh, I would say if you had to say, rate the first and second most prestigious titles in all of wrestling, you would have to go to WWE championship and then the, or the, the NWA champ, heavyweight championship and then the WWE championship. Yeah. And if you're a truly Absolutely. respectful fan of wrestling, You'd have it in that kind of one and two, whichever order you want to put them in for, for your basic preference. But yep. those two titles should be on your list of most prestigious in, in all of wrestling. And the reason Absolutely. for it is, is there's such a heavy lineage to both of those titles dating back to the 80s for WWE and dating back to the 60s with the nwa championship i want to say back further than even that. i was going to say both both uh both were a little bit earlier if i'm not mistaken and uh nwa was like 40s or 50s one or the other okay but i but i know uh bruno san martino in the wwf was the 60s or 50s right right and okay NW, so yeah. and, and, and 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 nwa is like almost uh, either a decade or a little younger than a decade older so we're talking about 60 and 70 year old yeah, championships here. Yep. Six, so, 60 and 70 year old championships either way. Got to respect Absolutely. them. Um, Absolutely. Capture one of those Kenny Omega. And then I'll call you the belt collector till then brother. Keep dreaming. <laughs> <laughs> oh, That's funny. All right, man. That's funny. So, um, uh, yeah, we gotta we gotta wrap up this this portion of the show, but uh, just shout out to AEW and everything that they're doing. Uh, Cody and them boys said that they were going to create an alternative, and they did. Fucking uh, killing it. No disrespect to them on any level for any of the criticism yeah. that I throw their way, but yeah, they they are they are um, proving that there's room there's more room for more talent in in the top tier of wrestling. So Absolutely. even though like. Like this WWE's on this part of the tier and AEW's on this part of the tier. 
but 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 they're on the tier. They're on the same tier. It's just, it's a reminder that we're both A, except you're A A minus and I'm A plus. You see? <laughs> <laughs> like. All right. So let's take a break. Uh, we'll come back in a little bit and we will actually be talking the WWE talking CW. and what's been going on uh, building that card for SummerSlam and possibly how these mask mandates may affect whether or not SummerSlam has fans on it at all. Uh, you're Slam listening around. to the Cheap Pop Podcast right here on the 4 Aces Presents Radio Network, Spreaker.com, iHeartRadio, Spotify, and wherever you find your favorite podcast. Peace. Peace. You're listening to the Cheap Pop Podcast right here on the 4 Aces Presents Radio Network. Speaker.com, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and wherever you may find your favorite podcasts. Game ticket, $50. Hot dog, $8. Team store item, $25. I told him I can beat him with one hand tied behind my back, with some glasses on with one eye lens out, with some flip-flops on in the rain. Having you listen to someone's dumb sports opinions? Worthless. Some people shouldn't talk sports. For everyone else, there's the Unspoken Podcast, available on most podcasting platforms, and on the web at the Unspoken Sports Podcast.weebly.com. From the galactic depths of the comic book universe comes the ghosts of the stratosphere, ready to galvanize and energize your mind with the latest of comic book news and reviews. And why, why are you stopping me? Yes, that's much better. Hi, this is Andy Larson for Ghosts of the Stratosphere. Join me every week along with my co-hosts Rob Stewart and Chad Smith as well as a cavalcade of fantastic comic book guests as we dish out heaping helpings of the greatest and latest of comic book news and reviews. New shows posted every Tuesday with bonus shows every first Friday of the month. You can find us on iTunes and Stitcher under Ghosts of the Stratosphere as well as on our website www.gotstratosphere.com Hope to see you soon, folks. And we are back. Yes, that pretty face you see in front of you is the one and only <laughs> Double KK Devil. You know, I can't help how pretty this mug is. It was just born this way. What can I say? Um, Dan Hyde. And, <laughs> and I'm here with my brother, Alpha, and we're here to talk some WWE. What's up, Alpha? Mm-hmm. Now we talk some indie shit. 30 minutes ago and now we're back to talk some w shit we're gonna talk some vince mcmahon's house of well empty seats now <laughs> <laughs> could be could be you know they're, they are talking about the, the the right now as of right now there's just gonna be mask mandates so everybody that's there are gonna have to wear a mask the event doesn't have to be canceled but who knows what can happen between now and the 21st wwe's keeping right. a close eye on it um exactly not only that, but we're talking empty houses behind the scenes as well with another yeah. batch of some releases. Oh, and man. Probably starting off with the most shocking of which that most people have definitely heard about by now. One, the fiend Bray Wyatt has officially been released and given. No, was not even given the good luck in your future endeavors. Yeah. Which, which is, leads which me is, to believe that uh, they may they may think they have a chance at re-signing. Yeah. I mean, you know yeah, what I'm saying? I, 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 I was going to say that's more like when you finish up football practice and the coach like doesn't slap your ass. That means they don't like you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when, you, when, you, when you don't when you don't get the good luck in your future endeavors on yeah. your way out, that means they don't like you. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, here's the deal. I think and I think that here's where AEW has affected WWE. Everybody thinks, oh, WWE is going out of business. That's why they letting all these people go. They're giving them their pink slip because yeah. they're closing down a performance center. No, people. A WWE signed approximately like it was like 298 or 300 plus wrestlers to their roster last year. A lot yeah. of it in the hopes of keeping a lot of the talent away from um and a lot of people were being paid to sit at home a lot of people yep. were being paid now you go well why not get rid of those people well why not bring them in 
and let them wrestle at a cheaper price and get rid of some of your higher price contracts. Uh, Bray yeah. Wyatt had recently re-signed for a large amount, was making good and, money. Uh, yeah. Braun Strowman, like, same like, like thing. I said, like, like I said, when Braun was released, the first thing I said was, well, here's the thing. They're cutting down on big, big contracts that they don't feel confident in anymore. Mm-hmm. And both Braun and Bray were some of the highest paid men on the roster and have been for the past five years. Now, I told somebody this the other day. As far as moving the needle, as far as TV goes, I love Bray, and he does. The yeah. Fiend does move the needle. But we hadn't seen The Fiend since WrestleMania. WrestleMania. And, and you know, we, we scream. What's funny is, is that nobody was screaming, we want Bray the five months he was still with the company and just on the shelf for medical reasons like nobody was screaming we want bray then but then they all of a sudden release him and now all of a sudden it's we want bray chance yeah i i I don't that's that's fair assessment you know what i'm saying i don't i don't understand that like like where you weren't clamoring for him to come back when he was injured and off to the sidelines but now all of a sudden that they release him it's clamoring for him whatever well, but, if it, uh, uh, well, it is also if if people knew it wasn't a health related thing 100 percent of the time because we were under the guys that it was health related 100 percent of the time. Right. We're now finding out at first it was health related and then it was a little less so. Yeah, and and Bray Bray will always be a fantastic talent. The man's obviously going to land on his feet no matter where he lands, whether that be AEW, Impact, wherever. He's he's made a name for himself as somebody who can develop his own character and can and can create a story. And so he's right. going to go um, do that. Yeah, you know, someplace else. But yeah. I think that there's and mark my words. Uh, here at at Cheap Pop may be the first time you're hearing of. It. I honestly think there's a sliver of a chance break it land back with WWE. Absolutely. Uh, I think, I think that's an inevitable. I think, you know, like, like you said, when uh, I was on, I was in the middle still of my alpha does America expedition. When I was given the horrible news through telegram that Bray Wyatt had been released. I was yeah. heartbroken, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but no, in reality, you know, my, my mom texts me and sends me the report and I'm like, fuck, this isn't real. You're fucking with me. And she was like, no, like I'm not. Lo and behold, did some research. It was real. Mm-hmm. And then immediately I text old boy K double and I'm like, K double, I'm hurting. I'm not good over this. <laughs> and he reassured me and gave me a point that I do consider now in the way that at the end of the day, Bray Wyatt is a fourth generation wrestler, not yeah. a third. He is a fourth generation wrestler. His yeah. family is so deeply ingrained in wrestling and the history of wrestling, drawing back to his first ancestor that did work with this all the way down to him and Bo Dallas for yeah. what it's worth. They have both stuck their feet in multiple footnotes in wrestling history. Bo Dallas being the third ever NXT champion and Bray Wyatt being the fucking character he is now for what it's worth. There's no way, shape or form that everyone, that anyone is going to squander this. If they so want to still pursue the wrestling business, no one's going to pass up either of the Rotunda brothers much less the one that's arguably more successful. Yeah, And so if he still wants to have a spot in wrestling, I'm sure he will find a place to be paid at or inevitably, in my opinion, with the way that he works and the way that he's trained, I do believe inevitably within the next 10 years, he's going to find himself back or finishing his career in Vince's arms. Yeah. Amen. And, and, you know, guys, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing. There are so many stories within the WWE. the most successful corporation that which that sport could hold on the face of this planet. What shame is there in that? Well, no, I'm saying like in the sense of like people say, people like act like there's this whole big thing about, oh, once you leave WWE, you have to hate WWE and never go back to WWE. No. no, fuck that shit. You can leave WWE to go. John Morrison did it. Drew McIntyre did it. Like they all left <laughs> Brock, WWE to go Brock find themselves literally. elsewhere. Yeah. And came Brock, Brock Lesnar literally got a tattoo representing his hatred for W and then still came back. <laughs> Vince offered him enough. And oh yeah, all you AEW, Brock Lesnar age, shut up. Tony shut Khan is not up. gonna pay Brock Lesnar. Like, like I read it, this one dude made the comment, and it's the dead truth. Tony Khan is not gonna pay Brock Lesnar 10 million dollars a year to work four dates. Like he's no, just I'm not. Sorry. 
Like, Brock Lesnar does not work unless you're paying him an absurd amount of money for low fucking dates. And it's not even because he's greedy. Brock just hates traveling. And I feel yeah. that. I feel that. <laughs> but so, and, and he's a draw. Thing. Shout, shout out real quick, too, real fast. I don't know if you've seen the pictures. If you haven't, do me a favor and look up pictures of what Brock Lesnar currently looks like. Because that motherfucker has a top-knot ponytail and a <laughs> full-grown, like, four-inch goatee. And the picture of him most recent is in that look with a fucking like big wide brim black cowboy hat. It looks baller it, uh, as shit, man. Fucking Lesnar's on his drip set, bro. It's fucking wonderful. It's Brock needs to bring it's that character great. to WWE. The country <laughs> the cowboy fucking, character. When, when he when he when he came out and he started dancing with the fucking money in the bank. Yeah, that but with this. Thanks. <laughs> Brock Lesnar. Yeah, baby. Yeah. <laughs> That's the gimmick I want. Gimme Jim, Jimmy Wang Yang for Brock Lesnar. <laughs> no shit. Man, I tell you, but at the end of the day, WWE, despite all its flaws, is, is having some good content going on right now. Oh, I hate yeah. when people say everything that's going on over there is just garbage. Shut the fuck up. No, it's not. Like, I'm sorry, but like that, you, I give you credit, man. You hit me to that match. I went back and watched it. That Gregano versus cross match for the NXT was title. Fire shit. Was fucking gold. Um, that, for- that is the potential that cross is worth that I've been waiting to show everybody this whole time. So I've, I've seen him do matches like that. But they were all in like high school gyms and no, no, no disrespect to that setting, but that's not a setting where things can be taped easily and recorded and passed around. And so I haven't been able to be like, hey, bro, watch this cross match here, watch this link and it not be in like fucking 180p. Yeah. (laughs) So like, so like, no, at this point, I'm really happy that at this stage, Cross is finally able to show all that fucking potential that I've been screaming so much about. Amen, bro. Like in, in it, it was, it was one of those things where, not only was it a great match, like between Cross and Gargano, but the interactions between Joe and Cross, the, the, yeah. you know, just just the way it was all built, and then the, that finish with Cross getting Joe in the damn sleeper and screaming, "I provoked! I provoked! I'm provoked! I provoked Joe! I provoked!" The fucking best. That was the awesome. Best. Oh man, no, and, it, and, it, and then Joe the. Uh, Joe on NXT the next the next the two following weeks. following yeah. episodes. Oh no, I'm sorry. Like let, let's mm, everything exactly the best part about WWE right now, no doubt about it, is NXT. There are a lot of good things on the main roster. Don't get me wrong. Roman Reigns storyline, the thing that we're running that now. I'm sad to see Balor on the main roster again, but the fact that he has come and instantly inserted to title relevance is something worth acknowledging. The fact that it was inserted right into the Roman Reigns, even more so worth acknowledging. I like this shit. Raw has some good stuff too right now. But NXT pulls the best out of fucking everybody. Yep. I'll give it credit. NXT and SmackDown had two of the best female, saw it coming a mile away, turns. Like, it was still awesome to watch. Watching Dakota Kai, like, man... I knew from the moment Dakota Kai started her promo, I was like, "Bitch, shut up!" You're She's gonna fucking on. turn. Like it's one of those like, things you can feel it deep within yourself. <laughs> yes, and so well, also you know, yeah, we've been people like me and you. We've watched enough wrestling, and we've 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 passed that magical yes. hour of wrestling it's where been, anything is not predictable anymore. <laughs> it's um, it's been eight and a half months. I know this, <laughs> I know this tag team coming to an end soon, boy. <laughs> uh, but but yeah, like watching her, that was great. And then, like I said, I knew from the moment Sasha Banks hit the hit the screen on Smackdown that she was going to turn on Bianca Belair and what yeah. happened you know so like it, it wasn't the predictability didn't bother me because I so enjoyed the event of watching it happen and sometimes mm-hmm. knowing yeah. what's going to happen isn't always a bad thing but but or isn't always a good thing but sometimes knowing what what's going to happen doesn't really matter to your enjoyment of the segment itself and that's what right. I felt happened with those two with those two segments. You're right. Absolutely. I agree with that statement. It was predictable. And the whole time I'm sitting there like, oh, she's gonna do it. Yeah. She's gonna do it. She's gonna fucking do it. But even then I still popped when she did it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and uh but but back to that Joe, but back to that cross thing. Now we got him down. stepping in the ring with a man who can really help him shine. Yeah, exactly. Um, and the build up to that has been fucking 
amazing you know like from from it's even better when you understand the context i don't know if you know it makes it even fucking better when you understand that joe got the call from johnny ace that he was released and put the phone down 58 minutes later triple h calls don't do shit stay on the line i'm signing you back to an nxt contract Joe says, I. <laughs> I. <laughs> like, just that quickly. Oh, shit. And the, like, those are the circumstances. And so when you see, when you know that context, and then him showing up as Regal's bodyguard, enforcer, and now the context yeah. of everything coming together to this way is, it, it, it almost, and now the way Joe is at, Joe is like the, the fucking hero of NXT. He's like this, this Kratos gladiator, like <laughs> bloodied, hero of nxt right now and it's the best fucking thing like this is how you build a face in wrestling you don't give me 80s boy scouts you give me samoa joe i'm a good guy and i'm coming for your head for all the right fucking reasons and you know who changed that dynamic he didn't make that dynamic but you know who emphasized and changed that dynamic the one and only stone cold steve austin because exactly. it didn't matter if he was supposed to be the good guy or the bad guy. You wanted to see that white redneck motherfucker come down to the Whoop ring and some beat some ass. fucking ass. Mm -hmm. It didn't matter who, what That's your color shit. was, what your exactly. rank was, where you was at. You wanted to see him kick somebody's ass. And, and I mm -hmm. definitely think Joe has that same energy. Like, you just yeah. know when you hear that burr, bump, 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 you know somebody, mm -hmm. somebody about to get it. Yep. somebody about to get it good yep. you know <laughs> joe joe is gonna kill you is not a chant it's an omen it's a yep. prophecy <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> now um i did hear quick rumor about the fact that um the reason why joe may have been tapped for this title match is because joe is most likely about to become the first ever three-time nxt champion because cross yeah, is making his move up I to could. the main roster uh so what do you think about that, about Joe yeah. becoming the first ever three-time NXT champion? Uh, I'm the only one in my house who's watched NXT all the way through. And I, and I will take this brag to my death because it's something I'm very proud of. I've watched NXT in its current version since its inception. I love NXT, and I've been an NXT mark since it came around in 2014 in its truest form. The best part about the way that they do title reigns is sort of how you can understand when they're coming when it's being dropped you can you can really tell when it's going to be dropped to the next person it's a kind of yeah. cycle of format it, it's it's a little cycle that they do it it's it's predictable but it's good like you said and it works for putting people over and making faces look valiant and heels look nasty it works yeah. but one of the best curveballs that they ever fucking threw into the entire title scene was samoa goddamn joe because what happened is we got used to this idea where it was just people who usually pass on the title after a while. Then we had fucking Finn Balor hold the bitch for nearly like 500 days, I think. Yeah, held it for close. like a year and a fucking half. He held it for a really long time. And then out of nowhere, Joe wins it from Finn and takes it out from at a fucking house show in Oakland. <laughs> from a fucking house show in Oakland. And he's the new NXT champion. And that's how Balor got sent back into the main roster. Then Shinsuke wow. Nakamura comes through and beats Joe and becomes NXT yeah, champion. Yeah. And everybody was like, all right, this is it. You know, this is usually where it's off because Joe was only signed to a very short, short deal at the time. And they thought that was it. Joe just came through, put, 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 put Shin over. That's it. Yeah. Wrong. At the next takeover, <laughs> Joe beats Shin for the fucking title and becomes the first ever two time NXT champion. Yes. The biggest fucking curveball, he wins it back. And then to cap it all off, to finish it, Shinsuke wins the title again, becomes the second ever two-time, sends Joe packing away, and he's Shin is now the one to stay and finalize his position there. Yeah, and that was when Joe moved on to the main route. Fucking curveball feuds in all of NXT history, especially in the title scene, isolated down to that. Oh. Making him the third person to ever win it would be the fucking whole story come full circle. <laughs> Hell yeah and i would love to see it i'm here for it but we got to squeeze one more title match in to to this thing or one more thing this match that they're setting up at SummerSlam between roman reigns and john cena and more specifically since we only got about two minutes left 
Let's talk about how we got to Roman Reigns versus John Cena. Because at first it was supposed to be Roman Reigns versus Finn Balor because Roman Reigns told John Cena no. Mm, yeah. And it was supposed to be, and Finn Balor stepped up and Roman accepted his, his, uh, his challenge. Then Baron Corbin, who's on this whole different tip right now, that's <laughs> just killing me, uh, came I out. I love this and, whole thing going on. Yeah, yeah I yeah. do, I do. Uh, and beat up Finn Balor and was going to take the 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 um, already signed I popped by for that. I, I popped for that. I don't know about you, but I popped for that. I was actually into that. Like, yeah, I was of like, this all leading into Baron versus Roman. I was like, hold yeah, up. Wait. Okay. And then, of course, John Cena, who had had an interaction with Baron Corbin earlier that night, comes sliding into the ring, knocks Corbin out or drops Corbin outside the ring and then signs his name on the thing. Now, I was still confused because I could have swore the original contract said Balor versus Roman Reigns, but I guess anybody can just come sign the shit and, and, just, and make it happen. Rules now, I guess. <laughs> I guess so. So no, you now can literally we have... see where it says Finn Balor on it, but... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, but... Uh, but Cena, Cena did his thing, did his thing, and yeah. came in. Now we got Cena versus Reigns, um, an all-time epic matchup, old versus new. Yeah. And it's weird saying that about Cena, you know. Yeah. Oh, and just to let people know, the prototype was Cena's the prototype when he was yeah. in FCW. The prototype because uh, because his, his I don't know if you remember it even more so. Apollo's old finisher was that thing where he would uh, flip them into a into a power bomb. Mm-hmm. like he would like hold them on his shoulders and then hoist them forward and then do into a power bomb it was like apollo cruz's first finisher he used he called it apollo's chariot before he stopped using it uh uh-huh. that was cena's finisher and it was called the proto bomb because his name was the prototype oh my god i well, that now, like a fucking yeah like a brick i'll say well now yeah. the prototype is wrestling in the main event of wrestlemania <laughs> looking for his 17th world championship that everybody thinks is coming simply because rick flair is no longer with the company so that just to spite him they'll have cena win the 17th i don't i i think i don't think they will but i I think cena deserves it though yeah i think if anyone deserves to break rick flair's record it's cena i would say so his stopping his lasting power and to be honest with you after watching him in the suicide squad i love the man the man's the man's becoming a pretty decent actor so so yeah i wouldn't mind seeing cena win it and it would help lead to whatever's going to go on with the rock at wrestlemania i think uh, i'll put it to you like this i don't think that cena's going to win the belt here but i don't think Mm. cena's done uh with the roman reigns feud yeah and i think we could see three matches between now and survivor series with cena winning the final one at survivor series with the rock's help and then that leads to the roman reigns to, as in as as a sly back to it happening before i think I, I i would be willing to bet they would call back to the feud from when the rock came in back and they would allude back to it in the royal rumble when it did happen or was a survivor series yes yeah, survivor series yeah when he teamed up I, I i think it's believable that the rock and cena would team up at some point over the next seven months at some point as a reference to their their tag match that they had at survivor series i wouldn't mind seeing it we'll see where they go with it Right now, all we know is we got John Cena versus Roman Reigns in two weeks. Yeah, at SummerSlam, and uh, we'll go from there. We won't talk about. We won't give uh, old no Goldberg. I was gonna say Oldberg, but I don't want to be that disrespectful. Uh, mm-hmm. Goldberg, the time of day right now. We'll we'll get to that later on because um, I think we have another wrestling episode actually the week of SummerSlam. So we'll get to talk all about hey. that. Um, but for right now, we got to wrap it up. Timer's gone beep. Uh, guys, thank you for listening in. Uh, we are the Cheap Pop Podcast Alpha. Drop some last words on them, and, and we'll talk mm-hmm. to them next week. Mm-hmm. Oh, my people, you know how it goes. The heat is just starting to really subside, and summer is finally officially fucking over. It's going to start getting cold in this bitch, and you're going to get some content even more. Be safe. We'll see you next time. Thanks for keeping around and watching. Peace. Peace.